So right now, guys, let's practice a four seam for our curve. So if my ball is spinning this way, which is the way we need it to spin for a curve, I count one, two, three, four, right? If I held it on a two seam, it'd be this way, and I'd count one, or one, two, going around. So we're gonna go like this right now, okay? I want your long finger right up against that seam, okay? Then your two other fingers, they can hang out here if you want to, okay? Some people kind of like to push it over. Some people like to curve that finger a little bit. The bigger curve you have, the slower it can go, especially if you press on it. So I use this as an off speed. So let's try to stay kind of long and stay against that seam so we can really press and rip on that seam, okay? Thumb has a seam right there too. So everybody make sure you got the grip for that curve. Let me see it. Love it, Serena. You feel that seam right up against your finger? You got it, Miss Spring? Spring, is that an 11 inch? Okay, it looks small. Your hands have just grown. Looks amazing. Girl, you are gonna rock it this year. I cannot wait. Okay, so what we're gonna do first are called lunch trays because this spin is a little different, right? We wanna release here. When we snap, we want the ball spinning like a top, okay? So this is something you honestly don't even have to have a net for this. It's just spin work. If you have a buddy to catch you, great. If you're my catcher, I'm gonna stand straight up square to you. Hold the ball like I'm holding a tray at lunch. Okay? I'm gonna get my grip and then I'm gonna go one, two, with my fingers and my wrist, three. And I'm gonna bring that hand straight down. Okay? So I wanna see your fingers go and then your wrist go. I don't wanna see it move in one big chunk. I wanna see it move like that. Three, two, three. Then we bring it down. My palm stays up. This is true spin for curveball, right? And I have a lot of girls, everybody does, that when they learn it, maybe they get true spin at like the lunch trays. They're throwing great spin at lunch trays. But once I drop my fingers and I go here, I might drop my hand like that and release, which creates more of a bullet, or usually you'll see a bullet when we miss our spin, but sometimes it might be fastball or a rise too, depending on what's, who's throwing it. If it's not a true curveball spin, the break will not be as much. This is 100%. This is like, it's close, but it's not quite, right? This is like maybe 25, 30. This, where the dot is coming at you, is 0%, okay? So pitchers that are taught to throw a bullet spin fastball have zero movement on the ball. But if we throw a peel or a 12-6 fastball, this is 100% because the dots are on the outside. The closer the dot gets to the middle, the less true spin we have. Does that make sense? So when you have a hanging curveball, sometimes it's because your spin isn't tight or your spin is drifting this way. We might be dropping our fingers like this and then releasing instead of like this coming around. Last thing you guys, spin spin takes a while to develop this is kind of like the math that i figured out at each this is this is roughly all right at each progression so let's say the halfway progression the halfway point it takes three thousand reps for your body to remember and get that true spin roughly right if we break up three thousand reps to like a reasonable number it's about six months and that's very very consistent okay so that's six months at that progression. And honestly, that's not that long if you get to work. So then we do six months as we scoot back at like 35 feet. There's our true spin. Six months at 40 to 43. It's about two years to get true spin on a pitch. That's like 100% at 43 feet moving the ball. Makes sense.